Hey, it's Matt Haynes, and I'm going to tell you how you can finally reach 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. And if you're struggling to get your channel off the ground, you are not alone. So today I'm going to share with you five key strategies that can help you reach that first big milestone. And I remember what a hard slog it felt like to get there. Believe me, I feel your pain. So stick with me on this. And by the end of this video, you'll have a clear plan to grow your channel. So here's the first step, choosing a niche that not only interests you, but also has real potential for growth. It's not just about picking something you're passionate about. You've probably heard people say that. You need to think about whether there's an audience for it and more importantly, if that audience is big enough to help you reach your goals. But there's one more thing to consider as you're planning the start of your channel. Is there room in your niche for another voice, for your voice? Or is it oversaturated with creators all covering the same ground? You don't want to be just another channel doing what everyone else is doing. So you've got to look for gaps in the content that's already been released. Maybe there's a unique angle or sub niche that you can focus on that hasn't been fully explored yet. For instance, if you're passionate about fitness, instead of covering general workouts, you could focus on something more specific like fitness for busy professionals or home workouts with minimal equipment. It's like a three-way Venn diagram. Here's all of the things you're passionate about, and this is all the topics and niches on YouTube that are just, you know, bangers, and these are all the untapped areas that channels aren't serving. That intersection in the middle is where your channel will blow up. I know, putting all those pieces together, that can feel pretty intimidating. You, you probably know what you're passionate about, otherwise you wouldn't be considering a YouTube channel, but how do you know the audience is big enough? Well, one way is to simply search for some topics in your niche on YouTube. If there are a lot of videos with big view counts, then it's a popular niche. You can also do some searching on CPM rates or cost per meal, which is just fancy talk for how much it costs or pays per thousand views. Higher rates for a niche means that it's more profitable, which is probably the most important if you're trying to you know, make money at this. Now, let's talk about your first few videos on your channel or your next few if you've already started. These are crucial because they're gonna set the tone for your channel and give your viewers a reason to subscribe. Don't worry about getting everything perfect right away. Just start creating. Focus on, you know, producing content that showcases what your channel is all about. So this might mean experimenting with different formats or topics to just see what connects with your audience. One thing to keep in mind, your first video should clearly communicate what viewers can expect from your content. Why should they keep coming back? While you do want to experiment with different formats like, you know, tutorials and talking head explainers and vlogs and I don't know, behind the scenes videos and, and so on. You do not want to experiment with your topic. Be as focused as possible. If you're a woodworking channel, every video needs to be about woodworking. If you're a comedy channel, make comedy videos only. Don't post serious woodworking videos to your comedy channel. As long as you're sticking to your niche, this is your chance to test the waters with different subtopics and styles of presentation. You can see how your viewers react and respond and then, you know, be ready to switch it up if you need to. You might find that what you thought was a strong idea just doesn't land and that's okay. The goal here is to learn and improve, not to create viral hits from day one. Besides, if you had a viral hit right at the beginning, you wouldn't know how to follow it up and then you'd be sad. And don't forget to pay attention to the basics, good lighting, clear audio and, you know, a clean simple background can make a big difference in how your videos are perceived. They don't have to be fancy and look like a studio like this, but you know, they, it does matter. And these small details show that you're taking your channel seriously. And I don't know, I think that professionalism will help build trust with your audience. And another thing, your video could just be absolute genius, but if your title and thumbnail don't catch people's attention, no one's going to click on it. You need to make your titles, you know, really catchy and intriguing and your thumbnails, they've got to be eye catching too, because let's face it, first impressions matter a lot on YouTube. Think about your own experience scrolling through YouTube. What makes you stop and click on a video? It's usually a combination of an interesting title that, you know, it tells you what's going on and promises you some sort of, you know, payoff and, and a thumbnail that grabbed your attention. So your title really needs to communicate to the viewer what they're gonna get out of it. And you can kind of spice up the titles, for example. It shouldn't just be, you know, 
how to edit videos, if that's the name of your video. You, you Instead, you could try something a little bit more interesting, like five editing tricks to make your videos look professional. And your thumbnail is the first and possibly the last time someone will think about your video. Whatever you do, don't just grab a screenshot from your video. Don't just let YouTube pick you know, a still from the video. Thumbnails are really, really important. It's got to be clear. It's got to have, you know, strong, easy to understand images, high contrast. You've literally got milliseconds to grab someone's attention. Anything too hard to understand is just going to be ignored. And you can use apps like Canva or Photoshop to make thumbnails. And there are plenty of resources about thumbnails on YouTube. By the way, you should probably have some text on your thumbnail. I just did a quick survey of the YouTube homepage and 80% of the thumbnails have some sort of text on them, but keep it simple, under five words. And here's a pro tip, faces and thumbnails tend to perform better because they create a personal connection with a viewer. So if it fits your style, don't be afraid to put your face on your thumbnail. Now your title and your thumbnail, they've got to match the content of your video. Nothing turns off potential viewers faster than a clickbait title that doesn't deliver. So be honest. Be clear and always think about what will make someone choose your video over the hundreds of others on the same topic. Once they do click, you've got just a few seconds to keep them watching. No stress, but that's where your hook comes in. So start with something that grabs their attention immediately, either a, a bold statement or an interesting question or a surprising fact. You need to give your viewers a reason to stick around and see what comes next. For instance, if your video is about photography tips, you might start with a really stunning photo and a question like, want to know the secret behind the shot? That hooks the viewer immediately because they see something beautiful and they want to know how to make something like that for themselves. And you're going to tell them how to do it. They're hooked. And you got to keep the energy up throughout the entire video by using techniques like, you know, storytelling or open loops. And I'll tell you an open loop well, let me give you an example. You might say something in a video like, I'll explain this in just a second, but first, let me show you something important. So what you're doing is you're kind of leaving a question in the viewer's mind and then pausing or, or delivering other content before resolving that, that question with an answer. That's called opening a loop. And getting subscribers is really important. So don't just hope people will subscribe, ask them to. And it might feel awkward at first, but asking can make a big difference. Something like if you want to see more great content like this, make sure to become a subscriber. It can go a long way. And where should you put this reminder to subscribe? Whatever you do, don't put it at the beginning of the video. The viewer doesn't even know if it's worthwhile yet, but also don't put it at the end. Most videos lose more than half of their viewers by the end. So put it somewhere in the middle for best results. Speaking of asking to subscribe in the middle of a video, if you'd like to see more content like this, please become a subscriber. You don't have to, of course, but I'll make it worth your while. And don't just stop there. You can encourage your viewers to interact with your channel and with your videos in other ways too. Like ask them questions in the video, invite them to you know answer those questions in the comment or even ask them to you know click the big old thumbs up. For example, if you're making a tutorial video, you could say, What's the biggest challenge you face with this skill? Let me know in the comments, I'd love to help. And this kind of interaction makes viewers, you know, they, they feel seen and heard and they feel valuable and this increases their likelihood of subscribing. And when viewers do comment, make sure you respond. I mean, this shows that you care about them and that you, uh, you know, you wanna interact with them. Okay, but a warning, don't ask the viewer to do all of these things in a single video. There's nothing worse than someone who says, be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below and click that notification bell. That's just too much for the viewer and it overwhelms them and it just makes them want to puke. So just pick one request per video. That's it. All right. Thanks for watching.